What's up y'all, Shuffle, and today's video is something I've been wanting to do for quite a while, and that is discussing the Act 3 boss in Darkest Dungeon 2. So there's gonna be spoilers, and we're gonna talk about what the boss does and kind of make like a mini guide, which I hope it gets changed, that's why I don't wanna go too ham on it. But we will talk about that, and then we're also gonna critique the boss and talk about how we can fix it. Because currently it is the worst boss on the mountain. I paused in case any people that were worried about spoilers wanted to leave. So that's what we're doing. And shout outs to all the fantastic people in DD Cord who have banded together to help flesh out the wiki. This is the fandom wiki. I don't like the Fextra Life one just because of how they operate their Twitch stream. But uh, yeah. And I don't even like fandom, to be honest. I liked this back when it was Gamepedia. And they got bought out by fandom, so... There's no good wiki out there, but this is the best one that we're gonna have, hopefully. And so we're gonna talk about the boss. And so hopefully all the people that are worried about spoilers are gone. <clears throat> I love this placeholder chair. Very funny. So... The eye boss has two phases. It's the closest thing to a puzzle encounter that we have. We're going to talk about why it kind of falls flat on that. So you can already tell that I don't like this. And so what the boss does is in phase one, there are four little eyeballs. They're not added to the wiki yet, but you can see them here. They have varying sizes. We have like, this is the small one. This is the medium one. This is the large one. And these little orange tokens are called scene tokens or focus tokens. I forget what they're called. And so what happens here is each eye will try and target a corresponding person. On turn one, these are all small eyes, and they'll go straight across. So one to one, two to two, three to three, four to four. After that, the fight devolves into chaos and they hit whatever they want if they don't have their focus token. So once they have the focus token, they will keep hitting that same person. That's the obsession theme at work. So phase one becomes a race to make sure that all of these orange scene tokens get onto one, maybe two people max, and they are your tanks. You want your damage dealers to not be hit by them if you can help it. And this is something that is going to make phase two easier. So what happens here is when the fight starts, all of the little eyes have like 12 or 13 speed. And so getting taunts up and noisemakers and stuff is your first priority, but it's very hard to make sure that that happens on the start of the fights. And then also they all spawn with dodge and they keep getting dodge when they attack you. So them having dodge means it's much harder to control the fight because you have to be able to hit through dodge. Sometimes it's coin flippy in that regard. And when you kill them, they lose their focus token. Then they respawn the next turn. So the goal is to get keep the ones on your tank that you want to keep and then kill the ones that are not on the people you want. So they reset. So you want to kill the, the ones that are targeting the other people, have them respawn and then taunt up your tank or use defender or something like that and draw it to that same person that you want. <clears throat> That's the puzzle aspect. In execution, there's too much variance for this to be a puzzle boss. So what happens is phase one, as I said, there's a lot of dodge tokens and the eyes, when they hit the target after they're marked, they either grow to the middle or the third. So once all three or all four of these are at the level three, the second phase starts, regardless of how you did in phase one. So if you just don't kill any of the eyes and you let phase one go for a couple turns, you're just going to start phase two and everyone's going to get hit. As you can see here with this team, we have three on man at arms and then there's this one, which is the second one here on Plague Doctor. So the goal is going to be to kill this one back down to nothing and then have it reset so man at arms gets hit. And I think we actually do that in this one. So we'll fast forward here. So for some reason they can crit too. I don't understand why they can do that. But yeah, we got crits and stuns. We're gonna speed this up just a bit. So, until we get to the point we want. Two, double speed. Eating food, good job, chef. 
glare, and they're just going to keep focus firing this person. And also, you take one stress per scene token that you have. So if your tank has all four, you're taking four stress a turn, which means you really have to have some kind of stress healing plan in mind, or you're just going to chain meltdown. So we're working on this one right now to try and get a lower, because I'm pretty sure I get all four on this one here. So you see they're growing. Getting this work down. Getting glowered. They generate dodge plus and strength for some reason. Try and taunt up here. Yeah. And so right here with this part two, since when you death store them, essentially, they shrink a size. So if they're maxed out like this, you have to knock them down to two and then back to one and then kill them to get rid of the token, which takes a lot of damage alongside them getting dodge plus and dodge constantly. So this this can get out of hand quickly. Like you can understand the fight and some of, you know, a lot of people are probably going to say like, oh, that's Darkest Dungeon, you know, stuff can go wrong at any time, but it's, there's, there's a fine line between the game having some uncontrollable elements that you, you know, can plan around as best you can anyway and try and mitigate it. And then there's just chaos. And this fight just devolves into chaos because, you know, the... You can have the tokens that you're trying to fix and get onto your tank, and the eye can just go from one to three, you know, after a certain point, and it can also just keep getting dodge, and you can never hit it. So none of that is enjoyable to interact with. Let's see. Um, it's pretty soon here. Oh, it's in a couple minutes. All right. Skip ahead. We're still working on this one slowly. And then you see here it's burning, it's down to its smallest size. We're just trying to lower these. Okay, so now we got rid of that one. We're on turn five, this usually doesn't go to turn five. Pretty hard to uh, drag it out this long, so. We are doing what we were supposed to. And this is important. We are doing what we were supposed to. We got everything on... We're about to get everything on Man at Arms. So, bellow to lower the speed. Taunt. Let's see what we do. Oh, you got double action. Okay. And then we taunt. And so what happens here, the bigger they get, the slower they become. So when they're all like size three and stuff, or like the biggest size, the third phase or whatever, when a new one spawns, it's usually going to outspeed all three of these. So having a taunt at this point is actually fine. Although having, what is it? Uh, repost is a bit scary because you can just one tap it. Actually, no, I don't think the... Uh, the scene attack triggers the uh, the repost here. So actually, this is pretty safe. Also, we have weaken. So on the off chance that I do swing back and kill it, at least the chance is a bit lower. So some pops. Goes first. Again, this is what we're supposed to be doing, and we, we did it. Observe. Does not trigger repost. Instantly up to three. And then we get phase two. And so phase two is kind of another problem that the game overall has where the game is definitely very damage racy. This is something I've talked about for like a year and a half at this point almost. And when I talk about damage race, I mean the recovery methods and the defensive plans in this game as a whole are just weaker than offense. In DD1, you could exercise more control with movements and stuns and stuff like that, so, and dodge. So defensive game plans were better, and in this game, it's really just about hyper offense. And this fight really shows that off. This fight and Librarian are two fights where if you don't win in like the first couple turns, you're probably dead. Or at least if you're not on your way to winning after like four, five, six turns, you're gonna lose. And so when the boss comes out, just hit you immediately. We can actually slow this down again. And we'll go back. Actually, let's, let's take a look at what the boss can do too. So this is the phase two move list. And so it uses behold if no one has a scene token. The most ideal situation to spawn phase two in is no one has, only one person has the scene tokens and they have less than four. And the way to do this would be to, if you're able to taunt and then dodge it, and then it grows up after that. So if you can 
get that very... I don't call it niche, but very uncommon scenario, then that... It's something small, but it does help, because... For instance, if you have three scene tokens, you're taking three stress a turn from these attacks, or from the stack, I should say. And so that gives you one extra turn before a meltdown, because you go up to nine stress instead of 12 after three turns. You know, and you can't get to 12, obviously, so... You know, it, it slows down a little bit, which is nice. And then Limerence is the thing it comes out swinging with, and it has a chance to give you horror, and it gives you this min minus healing received debuff. This debuff never goes away, and it cannot be resisted. It sucks. It absolutely sucks. It ignores blind and stealth, but not dodge. So you can still dodge it. So dodge tanks, or the ability to dodge while tanking, is relevance for sure. And the boss copies your tokens if it crits you. So this being a 30% crit rate, and then 36, I believe, if it's infernal, means you're getting crit for 60 by Limerence constantly, and it's stealing your tokens. So your tanks need to really your team has to have a game plan for that and so if you're running man at arms usually you want damage over time because it's going to steal your block tokens as we can see here i believe did it come in it came in and crit right so yeah it comes in and i think it crit limerence us and then yeah even though we have block plus which mitigated it down to 15 which is really nice it stole our other block tokens. Thankfully, I don't think you can steal repose. That'd be pretty nasty, but yeah. So it stole this from us. And this is why we need dot based characters. If you're going to run man at arms, the other two premier tanks, you know, I know grave robber can dodge it and do stuff, but if we're going to run um, like Hellion or Leper for this fight, then we want to use weaken instead of blocking, ideally. So moves that ignore block are good, moves that do damage over time are good, because it mitigates this exact scenario. We saw there, Limerence crit for 60, so if you have no way to mitigate it, even on turn one, it comes out swinging, so it's like, if it comes out and hits you immediately, and it crits, it can put your tank on death door, you know, if you don't have block up. So this is, this is already just a mess, you know. But yeah, and so even if... You do everything correctly. This is a team that did everything correctly, right? It got all four tokens, the scene tokens, the mechanic tokens from phase one on the tank. It has a dot team to help mitigate the block tokens that it's going to be copying from us. And you do all of that. And you can still be in the situation where you don't have enough damage. People are dying. I think I had Physician PD, too, for this, but I wonder if there's a really nasty clip of Suppress. So I'm going to skip forward a little bit. But Suppress is the other really, really stupid move in this fight. Like, Suppress, I might have the biggest issue with Suppress compared to everything else that this boss does, which is crazy to think about. There's the extra turn for Man at Arms, Suppress. Okay. Look at what just happened here. This move suppress hits everyone that does not have a scene token. It adds two blind, two weaken, and one daze. It tries to do all three of these every single time. Then has a one in three chance to stun you. What does that look like, Chef? I'm glad you asked. So we're gonna have Man Arms turn go off. Just to show you again how BS this is. Look at team completely fine, boss at half HP. You know, doing everything correctly, suppress. And now we have double blind, day stun, double blind on one of my damage dealers, days double blind, weaken, double weaken on this person. It doesn't matter what your damage is for the rest of your team on this fight. This effectively neuters all of it because it can, I don't think there's a condition on when it tries to suppress either. It just has a chance to do it. So this thing can effectively just like stun lock or lock down your team or effectively soft lock them with blinds and weakens and suddenly you're just out of the fight. So we're here, we're only three turns in, the boss is at half HP, this is a pretty good clip, our tank is perfectly healthy and has block and all the tokens are here. But then, 
it can just go completely south. And all of a sudden we're here with everyone dead, death door, boss at, you know, nothing, and cannot close out the fight. Gotta live for one more turn. Took the hit, but, you know, it's faster than you. And we have no uh, no speed because we're on death door. And it goes first and kills us again. So that's the entire fight. And it... You know, I was going to do the critique part in at the end. I think we should. Let's just do it at the end. But yeah, so with this fight, that's how phase one and phase two can go. But it's it's flexible enough in your choice of tank, which is nice. So this is with Hellion trying to effectively tank it. And actually, how do we handle this one? I forget. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we do, we do Hellion tank with this. So, same thing. Try and redirect all the attacks. We have the first two attacking Hellion. We have these two small ones here. So we're just trying to survive at this point. I can't remember if Blind works on the, the Observe hit or not, but this is Hellion tanking it. I don't have any footage of Grave Robber, so I apologize. Here, shy in the back of my mind right now. And see, we got we got everyone on that. We did it correctly. Comes out, Limerence. Almost on death door. Actually, I think she might have like uh, I don't know why she didn't die to that. Honestly, I don't know why it didn't hit her for. Oh, it hits for forty to uh. Or oops, yeah, I was gonna say it hits for twenty to forty. That's why it didn't kill her right there. So. It low rolled, otherwise it could have just death stored us immediately. It's super low rolled, actually. So we got lucky. But yeah, same thing again. We have um, some damage over time, but we also we have a weakened tank. So here's and another way to get around the dots. You know, we have dismiss with uh, take aim and comet shards, which that's gonna have to get nerfed at some point, right? I think it's yellow hand. Okay, I just have taunt. I don't. I, I didn't plan on Hellion living that long, but you could run Yop in that case, but that's, that's another way to do it. And then finally, this is a... Uh, I, I think I like this way the most. I, I actually like Poet Leper the most on this fight. Go figure, of all things. But... Same situation, got all the tokens here on the tank. And then Insta Grow, look at that. Look at that. It... It appears, it's baby size, pink, whoop, and now it's fully grown. So, if like if you don't have something ready for that when you're trying to you know get to phase two safely, you know it can just spiral out of control. You can lose this fight because scene tokens are on like two or three people instead of one because it'll come out and just start blasting your your damage dealers. Here we go, Limerence. And then Leper can, I was gonna say I have Intimidate, right? Yeah, and then we can Intimidate Tank and stuff like that. So it this one works out. I think this was like the cleanest one we had, yeah. So I don't know if this is on YouTube yet, but besides this video. And yeah, this, you can see here, it's it's essentially the same strategy for a couple different teams, right? Like Runaway and stuff, using Controlled Burn, um, trying to mitigate it with this, but just... And like, what's the difference between these? What was the difference between these attempts, you know? And <laughs> now I'm thinking about it. This one, um... We had some, we had a couple of bad suppresses. We had a super bad suppress, though, for this one. And that's, that was like the big difference, so... That's that's how you deal with the fight. You know, phase one is really important to have a clean phase two. Phase two is about keeping your tank alive for three or four turns and doing as much damage as possible and hoping the press doesn't screw you. There are a lot of ways to try and mitigate it. So like damage over time kind of gets you around the weekend. Milk soak linen gets you around the blinds. Um, there are other things to get around blinds too, like uh, what is it? 
hearth light, command, stuff like that, reflection. But you really don't want your damage dealers taking turns, like actual turns, not like using an item's okay. You don't want your damage dealers taking time using abilities because you can sit there and hearth light everything off and then it suppresses you again next turn. So it's an issue. The other way to deal with a lot of these negatives here are in items. So the healing debuff that we talked about can be countered by the restorative herb item that you can get for the ends. It stacks up to two. It's the thing that gives you healing received when you drop it on someone. And so you can hoard a bunch of these and drop them on your tank. To outspeed the eyes in phase one, you can hoard a bunch of speed poultice, which is like plus four speed and use noisemakers or taunt on turn one. And then you can also hoard a bunch of stun resist poultice and put them on your damage dealers to not get stunned by suppress. And then you can hoard a bunch of nightshade concoction, which I think is the stun, uh, DBR resist or DB resist poultice and put those on your tank. I don't know if you noticed the theme in what I just said. You can hoard a bunch of in items for the entire run and then use them. Like, yes, that is, an, that is an answer to it. However, I personally don't find that a very fun and engaging thing to do. For the fight. Like, me hoarding, getting a compress kit, and then hoarding... Anywhere between like 6 to 10 or 12 different versions of these items or combination of these items in order to get around the boss's horrible mechanics does not excuse that the boss is a horrible boss. It does not excuse the fact that all of the, the things it can do are just overtuned and not fun to deal with. It doesn't change the fact that it's supposed to be a puzzle fight and instead of being able to understand the puzzle and perform the fight correctly, it can just go completely haywire and grow instantly up to level three. And it's got dodge, so even if you know how the fight works, it's just got dodge over and over and you can't redirect it to hit the, the units that you want. And then it comes in, if you do it correctly the or incorrectly, the fight ends much faster than if you do it correctly, and even if you do it correctly, as you saw in that one example, you can get suppressed really hard on three people every other turn or whatever happens, and then you still lose. There are people out there that will defend that. And if you want to defend that, I mean, obviously I can't stop you, but just know I fundamentally and categorically disagree from top to bottom on pretty much all of it. What ends up happening is this boss is not an enjoyable experience. And so the way I critique this is my points were that phase one gets really chaotic, even if you know what to do. And you have to stack a bunch of speed in order to go first to help deal with the phase one puzzle, if you want to call it a puzzle. And that kind of emphasizes or at least highlights another unfun thing about the game, which is stacking in items. And I actually have something else to show about that. This is something from a community poll that we did recently, and I'm very surprised at how this broke down. We had two and a half thousand votes, and I asked how people felt about stacking in items in DD2. The majority of people, the overwhelming majority of people said it's good and it's fun. So th those are comments I'll have to dig through again later, but I, I'm i very surprised at that because the fact that we can do that doesn't mean that what happens in this fight is any less frustrating or honestly kind of garbage. So I don't I don't think that stacking in items, which I, I don't see it honestly surviving until 1.0. Like, I, if, I don't see it surviving that long, so what, what's going to happen if that goes out the window? It kind of already is heading out the window, because in the recent patch, they're starting to alter what items you can buy from inns. 
some of them got better, a lot of them got worse. And so there, there are times you may not see what you need to. It's like, oh yeah, you can just stack speed poultice. What if you never see it? You can stack stun poultice. What if you never see it? You can stack restorative herbs. What if you only get like two or three or four? You know, that's not, that's not enough considering that you're potentially getting minus 50% healing received per turn if you get double limerence. So after two turns of two limerence each, that's four limerence, you're at minus 100%. And there's another thing that happens too that no one even talks about, is if the minus healing debuff gets high enough, I think it's if it's past 100 or 200, I can't remember. The healing that you can actually get will damage you. So if you have restoration, for instance, like I did, and from the new apron trinket that they made, you can die. I'm pretty sure one of my lepers, I have to check all my footage again, but I'm very confident one of my lepers actually died to the restoration because of that. So again, just no nothing about this feels balanced or tuned or like it was, I, I see I see what the thinking was. I don't want to say it's illogical. It's just the execution of it came out very badly, in my opinion. Okay, so we talked about everything incorrect, or I shouldn't say incorrect, but everything that just doesn't feel fun or that's wrong with the boss, right? And all of it just compounds. The chaos in phase one makes phase two harder. Phase two hits for a ton of damage, so if you're not prepared for it, it's, you know, it can screw you. And even if you do everything correctly, you can just get a bad suppress and the fight ends. So, all of that matters before the healing debuff even exists, before Limerence hits you for 60. Like, all these things all add together to make it as bad as possible, you know? And so, it's not just a one and done, oh, get rid of the healing debuff, the fight's fixed. Oh, change suppress, the fight's fixed. There's a lot of things that have to change, I think, in this fight to make it more enjoyable because you have to remember too it's supposed to be a puzzle fight but then as a dps race which means you're going from like having control elements to needing full-on damage and if you do it incorrectly it doesn't matter if you have a bunch of damage and so this being at the top of a four to five hour run is also unfun so you get through five hours you beat exemplar you know this is like your second or third attempt at act three you're feeling good you got your trophy and you get up to the top, you do phase one, you have no idea what's happening, boss comes out, kills you in three turns with limerence. The fight ends very quickly. All right. Changes. How do we make this boss more enjoyable? At least to me. I don't even know if they're gonna listen to me, who knows, but. So what I would do for phase one is I would make it so these eyes Keep the same attack pattern. So on fate or on turn one, they go one to one, two to two, three to three, four to four, as we talked about. I would make them keep that that pattern. These are giga speed tank too. Look at this. We have high speed noisemakers. This is the thing. Let's see if this works too. So I've actually had this this strat backfire, but this is what we're told. Show if you need high speed noisemakers. So we did, and I want to see, let me scoot ahead here. There's something I want to see if I can, I think I have to get to uh, someone's turn. So down here, I don't think you can, can you see it? You can see it. So the, uh, the eyes actually only have 10 move resist, which is very interesting. So they only have 10 move res, which means you can move them around. The movement actually doesn't matter past turn one because they attack wherever they want if they're not focusing already. So you can't move them and force them to attack someone. Which is why I think if they always attacked in the same set pattern, this would open up another strategy that is not high speed taunting. And that would be movement. So if we could move the eyes around, you could have this one hit Hellion or your front row tank and then push it or pull something in front of it and then kill it and then it spawns and then hit your tank again. And you can do this over and over. And that, I feel like that would be another engaging way to do the fight that gives you a second strategy. So you still have high speed taunting, you still have dodging to make them miss and then grow after a certain point, and then you also have movement. So I think that would be pretty fun if that was 
another thing that we had. Also, I think Limerence, for my second change, Limerence should do a ton of damage to one tank. So if you have all four scene tokens on one person, or if it can only hit one person with Limerence, that's, it does the most damage to that target. And if it hits multiple people, it spreads out the damage. So instead of crit 60 on one person, if it hits all four, for example, it crits like for 15. And I cannot believe I'm advocating for a cleave attack on a final boss, <laughs> considering um, my nature of just hating cleaves in general from tough enemies, but that's the point we're at. So if Limerence spread out or was able to spread out the damage, I think that would be cool because the player then has to decide, am I putting all of the scene tokens on one person? Am I putting them on two people to spread out the tank damage? Did I screw up and three people or four people are getting hit? You know, at least I don't instantly die for it. Like it doesn't come out crit 60 on my damage dealers and then they're at death door doing no damage and then they die next turn. You know, that like that's, that's not fun. That's frustrating, at least in my opinion, so. Having it do that would be interesting, and even if you had the healing debuff, you know, still attached to it, you can't heal all four people multiple turns, so it's like, they, it comes out, it never suppresses, it does limerence, you know, two times, that's minus 50, does another set of limerence, that's minus 100, suddenly no, no one on your team can heal. And I think that's okay. You know, I, I still wish the healing debuff got changed or modified, but like, let's say we still had that. You run the risk of not getting hit by uh, Suppress in exchange for all of your damage dealers getting worn down and it shortens the length of the fights. So it's kind of a risk and reward thing. So I, I think that would be cool. And again, that gives you something to, to think about. It's do I stack all my scene tokens or do I risk it and have it spread out but everyone lives longer mathematically. Instead of someone getting killed, in two turns and then I get hit by behold which hits everyone afterwards and then you lose that's another loss condition in the fight too by the way is if your tank dies early the rest of your team gets hit by behold and then you die in like two turns after that so the fight ends so fast if you screw up which I'm sure some people like but I personally don't and then another thing to do if limerence gets spread out damage or if we change the damage or the healing debuff, if the healing debuff just goes. The healing debuff is mostly there to make sure the boss can kill you because it can't do any damage over time. And so its goal is to get your HP healing to negative so you can't heal anymore and then Limerence kills you. That's, that's how it's supposed to operate. But if we change it so the scene tokens also cause damage per turn, just a, a small amount, just literally like one damage per token, just like the one stress per token, kind of gives it a pseudo damage over time effect alongside what it's already doing. So you have the stress damage building up and then you get crit for limerence or you melt it down and then even though you're blocking, you get hit to death door and then the scene tokens will kill you. And it's also something you can't cleanse with Plague Doctor or items because they are orange tokens and it's not an actual damage over time effect. So I think that would be an interesting way to make sure the boss can still kill someone, but there's still more counterplay also going on since you can choose to spread out the damage. And then finally, suppress needs to do one blind or weak, either or, not two of both, one or the other. And then it can daze you. That's fine, I, I actually don't hate the days that much. And then remove the stun. Just take the stun away. The stun is not fun. It, it's not okay. It's so devastating. And it's, you know, possible random chance and you have to like stack up poultice or whatever if you want to get around it. It's just not, it's not okay. It's not good. And they need to change it so if the healing debuff stacks high enough, a heal won't kill you. I just think that's an oversight, honestly that it works that way. It's funny, but it's not cool. <clears throat> so I think that's it for my critique slash strats for the boss. Finish the thing down below. If you enjoy it, 
or if you think that we need to change stuff, because I've got more than a few comments on the videos when I, you know, start ranting about the boss and people say, just get a bunch of speed, Chef. Like, get a bunch of speed. You may not see the speed poultice. Get noisemakers. You may not see noisemakers. And then put all that on your tank and, you know, outspeed it and then funnel everything to the right person. And it's like, I showed you an example of you can do everything correctly and still lose. Went to the last spell. Big shove. Like, you can do it all correctly, get hit by a brutal suppress, and still lose the fight. Some people are going to defend that. But I'm not going to agree with that. So. That's it for the video. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you're thinking down below in the comments. I'll see you next time.